Hi guys, today we're back with 21 names inspired by space. Someone actually asked me to do this the other day and I accepted. I actually love these kind of names from outer space and it's really a wonder that none of my pets are already named after them. I've decided not to include already well-known names such as Luna, Orion, Aurora and any other planet's names just because I think we should explore a little bit further and find some really unusual names. In this video I'll go through seven girls names, seven boys names and seven unisex names. So let's start off with the girls. Number one is Andromeda. Andromeda is the closest large galaxy to the Milky Way and the Milky Way is a galaxy our solar system is in. Back at the start of 2015 a photo was taken of Andromeda and it's incredible. You can actually watch it on a video in 4K and I'll leave a link in the description box below. But I really love this name. I think you could shorten it to Andy, but I definitely think it can work for a girl. Next up we have Alara. Alara is Jupiter's 8th largest moon. It was discovered in 1905 and takes nearly 260 Earth days to complete one orbit. Like most astronomical objects, it was named after mythology. In this particular case, Greek mythology. So Alara was one of many of Zeus's lovers. Zeus is a Greek equivalent to the Roman god Jupiter. In Greek mythology, Zeus hid her from his wife by placing Alara deep beneath the earth where she gave birth to their son, who happened to be a giant. Next up, we have another one of Jupiter's moons. Beware, there may be a few of these since Jupiter has at least 67 known moons. So up next is Europa. Now, some of you may be familiar with the Europa League. That's what I think of when I hear this name. So if you're a fan of football and astronomy, this works on two levels. If you have a pet that may represent cold or icy conditions, maybe because it's all white or it's born in winter, then Europa may suit it very well since it is an icy moon. Though don't be put off by all the ice, it's thought that Europa could very well harbour life. The fourth name on our list is Io, and guess what? This is also one of Jupiter's moons. And I always go back and forth with this name because I really like it for one of my pets. I think the surface of the moon matches up with my gecko quite well. Unlike Europa, it is not icy. The surface is actually covered in volcanoes, hence why it looks so awesome. The only downside I found with this name is sometimes it just feels too short, but hey, it could work for your pet. The fifth name on our girls list is Laika. So in 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first living creature to orbit the Earth, Laika the dog. Sadly though, she didn't live too long, but hey, she did a lot more things in her short life than the average human has. There are quite a few different meanings to this name, one being the Barker. So I think naming your dog Laika would just be the perfect tribute to one of the most famous dogs in astronomy. Next we have Lyra. The Lyra constellation lies in the northern skies. The constellation is meant to represent a musical instrument called a lyre. Now whenever I say this I feel like I'm saying lyre in a bad Irish accent, I'm just going lyre. But um, anyway, the constellation is associated with the myth of the Greek musician and poet Orpheus and contains the fifth brightest star in the sky, Vega. So if you're into music, mythology and astronomy, this name is perfect. And finally, we have Pandora. Pandora is, and I quote, a potato-shaped moon of Saturn. Yep, that one's straight from NASA. It's particularly interesting because of its weird shape, its marks, ridges, craters, and debris on its surface. Now, you may have heard of this name before, you may have heard of Pandora's box. Well, the main character in this myth is who this moon is named after. Basically, in mythology, the gods transformed her into a human. Whilst on Earth, she let her curiosity get the best of her, and when she opened the box, she let out evil creatures. However, she's also responsible for Hope entering the world, since Hope had been the last creature in the box. So, you know, if you have a very inquisitive pet, Pandora is the perfect name. Now for boys' names. First up, we have Apollo. Of course, named after all the Apollo missions, the most famous being Apollo 11, when Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. Next, we have Draco. Now, you may be thinking, isn't that that kid from Harry Potter? Well, yes, but 
J.K. Rowling took a lot of her characters' names from celestial objects, such as Luna, Sirius, Bellatrix, the list goes on. But yes, Draco is a constellation which contains three galaxies. Unfortunately, they don't have the fanciest names, just basically numbers and letters. However, the meaning and the myth behind the name is pretty awesome. Draco means the dragon in Latin. Draco represents Laden, the dragon that guarded the gardens of Hesperides in Greek mythology. So if you have a bearded dragon, this one is perfect. For the third name, we have Galileo after Galileo Galilei. I am sure you've heard of him. He is an Italian astronomer, physicist, engineer, philosopher, and mathematician who discovered Europa, Io, Callisto, and Ganymede. These are all, of course, Jupiter's moons and collectively are known as the Galilean moons. Next up, we have Oberon. Oberon is one of Uranus's moons. It was discovered by William Herschel in 1787. I think you could easily shorten this name to Obi. I think it would be a cute little nickname. Oberon is best known as a character in Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, where he is the king of the fairies who interferes with the love lives of mortals and plays tug of war with Titania over trinkets and toys that they both want. Titania is also a moon of Uranus and was discovered by William Herschel. Do you know how hard it is not to say Uranus right now? I'm trying to, I'm trying to be mature here saying Uranus, but you know, it's difficult. Anyway, next name. Perseus is up next, or Percy for short. Perseus is a constellation in the northern sky. What's most interesting about the name is the myth behind it. It's quite a long story, but basically Perseus kills Medusa, falls in love and marries Andromeda. So yeah, if you have two pets, you want to name them. Name them Andromeda and Perseus, or Andy and Percy. They are destined to be together. Next we have Sputnik. I put this in the boy section, though I guess technically it could be a unisex name. But yeah, this is of course after Sputnik 1, the first artificial Earth satellite launched by the Soviet Union in 1957. And finally we have Titan. So Titan is the largest moon of Saturn and is the only other place in the solar system known to have an Earth-like cycle of liquids flowing across its surface. Now in mythology, Titans were a generic term for the children of Gaia and Uranus. The Titans were known to have devoured the son of Zeus. Now he had obviously many children, but this was a particular special son. Now, enraged, Zeus struck the Titans with lightning. The lightning burned the Titans to ashes, and from the ashes, mankind was formed. So, if you've ever wondered where you came from, looks like we were made from the ashes of Titans. Though, saying that, what's actually pretty interesting is every living thing on Earth is actually made from the heart of a dying star. We are literally stardust, and that's not even a myth, that's actual science. Anyway, now on to unisex names. Up first we have Bode. Bode is a spiral galaxy, though sometimes it's referred to as Messiah 81. It is truly a phenomenal thing to look at, as you can see by the photo. Bode comes from the surname of the man who discovered it in 1774, Johann Alert Bode, a German astronomer. Next up we have Eclipse. So this of course refers to the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse. If you'd like to see a lunar eclipse where the moon turns blood red, I actually filmed a time lapse of one so you can go and check that out, I'll leave the link in the description box below. The third name is Haley or Halley. I would say Haley, but you can pronounce it whichever way you want. Now this is after Haley's Comet. So in 1705, English astronomer Edmund Haley, or possibly Edmund Halley, I can't remember, <laughs> published the first catalogue of orbits of 24 comets. His calculations showed that comets observed in 1531, 1607 and 1682 had very similar orbits. Haley suggested that they were really just one comet that returned approximately every 76 years, and he predicted that the comet would return in 1758. Now, unfortunately, he did not live to see his prediction come true, but that comet did come back late in 1758, and it kept returning every 76 years as predicted. Haley's comet is next expected to return to the inner solar system in 2061. The next name is Kepler. This is after the Kepler Space Telescope, which is currently searching for Earth-like planets. At this point, they have found over a thousand confirmed planets thought to be suitable for life. The telescope is named after Renaissance astronomer Johannes Kepler. 
Our fifth name is Narvi. Okay, okay, so basically, this is technically a male's name. In mythology, Narvi was Loki's son. However, I think it could work for both. Narvi is one of Saturn's many, many moons. The next name is NASA. Obviously, I have been on NASA's website constantly to make sure all my facts are correct. NASA was started in 1958 as part of the United States government and it is in charge of US science and technology that has to do with airplanes or space. And finally, our last name is Nova after Supernova, the dramatic and catastrophic end of a star's life. That's not all bad because the results are pretty amazing. I mean, devastating, but amazing to look at. And luckily, our sun is, of course, a single star, but thankfully, it does not have enough mass to become a supernova. So yes, they were all the names. Honestly, I could make another list, but this video would go on and on and on. I love these kinds of names, and I love that they each have a story behind them. And if you're really into astronomy, I highly recommend watching Cosmos, A Space Time Odyssey, or Professor Brian Cox's Wonders of the Universe and Wonders of the Solar System. We've spoken a lot about constellations and moons and galaxies, but I want to put all these things into perspective. So this is Earth and the Moon. This is Earth in our solar system. This is our solar system in the galaxy, the Milky Way. Most of these stars in the galaxy have their own solar systems. And here are tons and tons of other galaxies. Do you feel pretty small yet? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave you with one quote that I feel sums this up perfectly. There are two possibilities that exist. If we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying.